biggest operators that we work with um, and our partners in those countries. So I'm really pleased today we're joined by Ben from Journey Latin America. Uh, Journey Latin America, I think, are celebrating their 40th anniversary this year. 40th year, that's right. That's, yeah, that's um, pretty good going. Uh, and we've we've been working with them since since Putney Travel was 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 set up. We are you know, we, we're always really impressed by their passion for for Latin America, uh, their detailed knowledge. They run both small groups and 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 m most of the holidays, however, are private tailored holidays. Uh, we love working; they're very personal great attention to detail and the local teams on the ground are, 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 are second to none. I, I guess the last instance we have of, of seeing those in action was, was helping out clients of ours stuck in uh, or, or in Costa Rica um, at the time of the, the COVID, COVID outbreaks at the start of March and they really looked after everyone so well so we, it, was, it, was, it was great to know we had that sort of fantastic team on the ground there. Um, Costa Rica has always been one of our, our, our top destinations. It's, it's the perfect holiday for nature lovers. Uh, the mixture of coasts, rainforests, cloud forests, volcanoes, lots of activities, so it works well for families as well. And I guess the, 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 the standard of guiding is so exceptional there as well, which really brings it home. So that's enough from me. I'm gonna hand you over to Ben. The presentation should be about 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, Please ask questions afterwards or also send notes into the chat box as we go along and I'll, and I'll interrupt Ben if, it, if, it's, if it's suitable at the time. So yeah, feel, feel free to interrupt if you need to, that's fine. Great stuff. Over to you, Ben. Great. Excellent. Well, uh, thanks, Charlie. Thanks for, for the welcome and welcome to all of you. Thank you for, for joining. So, um, well, as, uh, as Charlie said, we've been working with Putney Travel Company for many years and um, uh, and so I'm pleased to, to be able to talk to you about Costa Rica um, and um, so I'm going to run through um, various different regions um, but I'm going to start off just with a video. Uh, I'm afraid we've had a few technical difficulties so the sound is unlikely to work but um, it should give you a good flavour of, uh, of the country. Well, I hope wow. you um, in, enjoyed that video. Um, it, it really just gives a, a brief um, but comprehensive view of, uh, of what Costa Rica is all about. So, um, so in terms of destination, it's actually very easy to get to in, in Latin American terms now um, with the direct British Airways flight, which, uh, which is great. Um, we do have clients occasionally wanting to combine it with a stopover in New York or in Miami, so that, that can also be done. Um, or if people are combining Costa Rica with another um, Central American country, as sometimes people people will, um, then Iberia also fly there, allowing for the open jaws um, flights. But I'd say the majority of, um, of people we send will fly with BA just because of the you know the, the practicality of the direct flight. Um, so uh, it's only 11 hours away, as uh, as I mentioned here. So. As a destination, I, th I think Costa Rica is absolutely amazing. I, I first went there before I worked for, for Journey Latin America. Um, I've been working for them um, since 2002 and since being a away every single time and I think um, 
the obvious reason is, um, you know, is uh, what it has to offer for a um, nature lover. Um, absolutely amazing uh, wildlife, uh, spectacular forests. But there, there is something for everyone there, I think. Um, uh, as this slide shows, um, you know, there's something for thrill seekers, um, um, some, a great deal for families. It's an extremely family friendly destination. Um, serious bird watchers um, uh, will be highly rewarded um, and just casual um, you know wildlife enthusiasts um, you know tend to really get into the bird watching as well um, there's lots of soft, soft adventure opportunities and activities um, the one thing that Costa Rica doesn't have and is just worth mentioning is it doesn't have much in the way of cultural attractions or ancient sites so um, it's really a place that you go to for um, you know for the nature of the outdoors um, of course it's very easy to combine Costa Rica with neighboring countries that do have um, you know Mayan ruins in Guatemala or you know lots of culture in neighboring Nicaragua or Panama so um, that's one of the reasons people would sometimes combine as if they're wanting as part of their holiday a bit of a cultural hit then um, then that's worth considering um, so um, it's very family friendly um, you know a number of the, the points that I've mentioned here are of particular interest or concern to uh, to family so it's a, a safe country in fact it uh, it doesn't even have an army so it's a democratic republic um, there's wildlife everywhere as we said um, I know that uh, my five-year-old son would absolutely love to go to Costa Rica he's never been but um, you just can't go wrong with uh, with Costa Rica for families just simply because um, of, of the ability to be outdoors and um, you know see see nature everywhere um, there are no long journeys involved. I think probably the longest journey that, that I have ever done in, in Costa Rica was probably something like four hours. Um, uh, a big contrast with a lot of Latin America. So um, in South America, often you're doing you know, much longer journeys. So I think uh, it's another reason why Costa Rica is particularly um, popular with families. Um, and um, it's car hire friendly. You don't have to do car hire. We we organise, um, you know, self-drive itineraries as well as um, uh, tailor-made itineraries that involve um, private guides and private drivers. Um, or even if you know, if, if looking either to meet other people or to keep the costs down, we can also organise transfers with small shared transfers that that might have up to you know, sort of eight people in them um, between areas. Um, and then, of course, it's got a really, really good network of excellent lodges um, and hotels, and particularly, particularly strong across the whole country of the, um, uh, you know, the concept of the, the eco hotel, but the genuine eco hotel. Um, Costa Rica has always been, um, you know, way way ahead of anyone else, really, certainly in Latin America, with um, uh, the importance of sustainability and protecting their country, protecting. Um, you know their natural resources and um, and you know long long before the the recent conversations of um, sustainability and um, uh, environmental protection Costa Rica has been practicing these things for a long time so one of the benefits of that is um, you know as you'll see in some of the pictures that the coasts are really not built up like you might expect for, for such beautiful beaches um, uh, many other countries would have really built uh, built quite heavily whereas the law in Costa Rica prevented that so um, lots of untouched wild um, wild beaches um, Charlie alluded previously to the the guiding which is extremely high standard in Costa Rica um, a lot of the guides will work for lodges um, and um, and you know depending what you're doing and where you're going you might otherwise have a guide accompanying you from one place to another um, but the standard in, in Costa Rica is extremely high. Um, the quality of English speaking is, is um, you know, particularly good in, in Costa Rica because of the proximity to the US um, and, uh, and the fact that it's always been, you know, a relatively sort of peaceful and safe, well, it's always been a very peaceful and, and, and safe country. And um, because of that, there have been strong ties with the US that have helped, um, you know, in terms of English education. And that really benefits um, uh, visitors because a lot of the guides speak fantastic English well all, all the guides do and actually quite a lot of the people you meet may, may speak a bit of English as well 
Um, of course, they're all you know qualified in in their particular area. Um, uh, most of whom you know will tend to be um, you know qualified in in natural sciences. Um, so the areas that I'm going to talk about um, uh, 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 shown on this map, um, of course, you'll see that on the whole they tend to the arrows are pointing to the Caribbean side um, and to the Pacific side, with only two um, interior places, that's Arenal and Monteverde. Um, this really represents the, the, what I would say, the main highlights um, and, and perhaps the, the kind of areas that you would visit in a two week holiday. There is of course much more, um, but limited on time, um, I thought better concentrate on, on what most first time visitors would consider the areas they might want to go. Um, but do bear in mind there's, there's plenty all the way um, you know, the cloud forest really follows the mountain range all the way through the country. Um, and, uh, you know, so lots of different reserves there. Um, I also um, haven't put San Jose on here. I've just marked it with an aeroplane. Um, so San Jose being the capital. Um, it's, it's a nice city, but there's no real reason to overstay there. So most people will stay for a night or two. Um, before moving on to you know to, to one of the other destinations um, however if you do choose to spend two nights after a long haul flight um, there are lots of day activities that you can do outside of San Jose um, one of those I, I don't know if you noticed on one of the previous slides a, a, a volcano with the sort of sapphire colored lake in it um, which is called Poas Volcano that that's very easily done as a day trip from from San Jose and combined with a visit to a coffee farm um, um, or, or there's some waterfalls near there makes a really nice first day start to, to any holiday um, but really I'm going to concentrate on these areas so um, Costa Rica is a small country, 25, over 25% 25 of the country is given over to national park and private reserves. Um, and so um, a lot of the, the sort of main interest, if you like, um, is in the rainforest or in the cloud forest. Um, um, up on the um, northeast coast, um, that little peninsula that, uh, sorry, not northeast, um, northwest, um, uh, that little peninsula that's, that sort of is marked as Guanacaste, that part there is a bit drier, um, but really otherwise most of the country is rainforest or when you go into the, into the, the mountains, um, uh, cloud forest. So Tortuguero is, um, is probably one of my favorite um, rainforest destinations um, in, in Costa Rica. Um, it's got quite a lot of competition obviously, but um, it, it's just an amazing, um, place with a really adventurous um, sense to, to getting there to start off with. So um, you'd normally leave from San Jose and, uh, and travel by road before meeting a motorized canoe where you follow channels through the rainforest to get to Tortuguero. And so the adventure really starts as part of the journey, which I think is one of the, the, the things that's so great about it. Um, Tortuguero itself, um, this is a picture of the small town. You can see in top left, it's, it's a very small town. It's, um, uh, you know, just really, a, um, uh, I'd say on the whole, it's, it's probably the size it is because of the, the tourism that, that has come to, to the area. Um, and um, most tourists are coming here because of the, uh, the amazing rainforest and the opportunity to explore the, um, the wildlife either taking canal trips, um, sorry, canoe trips into the canals that back onto this forest, or walking along the trails, um, or in July to October, um, some really amazing uh, turtle spotting where the beaches are just absolutely covered in, uh, in turtles. Um, so those are the main, main things that people would go for. Um, this is just this slide here is to try and give you a feeling for, for what the Tortuguero trails would, um, would usually sort of consist of. Um, so you can see on the whole well-marked trails, you actually don't have to go very far out of um, the hotels or the properties before you're seeing things. I remember seeing lots of these little um, red uh, poison dart frogs, um, you know, just literally on the boundary of, um, uh, of the property. Um, the, the big sort of um, uh, iguanas and lizards uh, are really kind of seen everywhere. Um, 
you'll see quite a few pictures of snakes in this presentation, which um, uh, of course some people are, are rather scared of them. Um, and there's always a bit of a debate as to whether you should be showing the pictures, but um, um, you're not going to come across snakes in, in any sort of dangerous context. Um, chances are, if you want to see them, the guide will um, be able to point them out to you. Um, uh, most often, curled up in you know inside a tree or um you know on a on a on a branch and i have to say most people find it absolutely fascinating um being able to to see this um uh you know this variety of colorful frogs colorful snakes um uh and you know amphibians and so on um so that tends to be more of what you see on the trails so it tends to be more the the sort of um uh you know the the, the reptiles and um, amphibians and so on. Um, when you go on the canals, you tend to see a bit more of the larger wildlife um, up in the canopy. So lots of monkeys, spider monkeys, um, howler monkeys, um, squirrel monkeys, and, and the forest is just teeming with wildlife. It's unbelievable. Um, I've been lucky enough to travel to the Amazon on, on several occasions. I've never quite understood why, but the volume or, or the ease with which you see wildlife in Costa Rica always stands out. Um, you see a lot in the Amazon, um, but it tends to be um, more difficult to see. Um, I don't really know. I'm sure there's a good explanation for that, um, but it's just unreal how easy it is to see the, the wildlife throughout Costa Rica. And Tortuguero, I think, is wonderful because it offers the option to to see that wildlife in different means, so by canoe, by you know trails, um, and then of course if you're there at the right time of the year, July to October, um, then you can see this this incredible spectacle of um, thousands of, of turtles, mainly green turtles, although there'll be the odd leatherback and the odd uh, hawksbill, um, but coming to to, to nest and um, about a month later the the little hatchlings um, will come out and um, make their way down to make the treacherous journey i should say down to um down to the sea um in the video there was a picture of a jaguar actually um which um they are present in tortuguero but um the, the chance of seeing those are extremely extremely small the scientists who, who are out here do see them quite frequently but um as a as a tourist it's it's pretty difficult to see um, you know, as a traveler, it's pretty difficult to see Jaguar in Costa Rica, even though they are present. Um, so that's a bit of talking about the destination. I, I am sort of having to, to skip through quite quickly. Uh, there, there's, of course, a lot more to say a lot of, uh, about a lot of these places. But um, I wanted to show some of the accommodation as well, because um, the accommodation in Costa Rica, the, the lodges, as I mentioned previously, are really excellent. So Tortuga Lodge would always be my first choice. And these photos are just to give you for a, a bit of a flavor um, to the comforts that you can expect so you know nice swimming pool beautiful gardens um you know very comfortable room um an excellent food here as well actually um tortuga lodge is one of the higher end um properties there um so i've put in another one just to show the opposite um you know of course because as a company we work with people who are looking for their you know sort of five star luxuries throughout as well as um you know the mid-range um more down-to-earth accommodation if you like and so this turtle uh, turtle beach lodge is an example of that so you know clean comfortable um still with some nice uh, nice facilities and an excellent location um you can again just walk out of the lodge here and explore the trails um uh, and the beach as well because uh, this one's located on the beach um one thing i should mention about the beach in Tortuguero, sorry, is that it's not a swimming beach. Um, so although it's on the Caribbean, um, the main interest in the beach really is the turtles, but but it's, it's not for swimming. Um, so so Tortuguero is um, you know one of the primary rainforest destinations in Costa Rica. Um, the other one is the Osa Peninsula, which is shown on this map. Um, uh, down at the south. Um, so Osa Peninsula, most people would fly to, fly there and back, um, although you can get there overland, it's, uh, it's a bit of a long bumpy journey. So most people would fly in and out. Um, and as you can see just from the picture here, um, you know, the symbols, there's a bit more to do here than in Tortuguero. So that's why generally whilst in Tortuguero most people would spend two or three nights, Osa Peninsula 
is the kind of place that um, you know three to five nights is um, is probably ideal. Um, in terms of um, why go to Ossa? Um, well, the rainforest is is of course the primary attraction. So Corcovado National Park, which is you know primary unspoilt uh, rainforest, um, offering great wildlife. Um, but um, the other reason to go go to Otter as well is unlike Tortuguero, Otter Peninsula does have some fantastic beaches that um, you know that, that are wild and pristine. There are not lots of sort of facilities on the beaches here, but um, for people who are looking to combine a wildlife sort of nature holiday with you know with a bit of beach, be it just for the scenery rather than sunbathing, or, or also. Um, if people are wanting to, to sunbathe and just have a few sort of uh, relaxing days, then Ossa Peninsula, um, you know, is, is great for that. Um, so um, the top left picture um, with the boats um, shows Drake Bay, which is where most people would fly into. But usually you would then take a boat onto a lodge that's slightly more remote. So somewhere that's um position like the photo on the bottom left which was a photo i took from um the lodge that i was staying at so um uh, again you know lovely and, and sort of remote but easy to get to as well um corcovado national park um uh, again full of wildlife um and um it's, it's more extensive than um than tortuguero um, but is also linked to a different part of Central America. So you will get different species here. So very often, um, uh, you know, those traveling to Costa Rica whose primary interest is wildlife, perhaps seeing as many sort of uh, species or as much variety as they can, then they would often um, in a two week holiday combine a visit to Tortuguero and also with the Osa Peninsula. Um, so, um, again, these photos, are, are, are num not all of them, but a number of them are mine. Um, I'm not a, an amazing photographer. I think it, it just shows how close you can get to, um, you know, to the wildlife um, uh, with a good guide, of course. The, the guides are just incredible at, um, you, know, picking, uh, you know, picking things out that you might otherwise miss. Um, on the previous uh, slide, it showed the, the bigger species, but um, again, um, in, in Costa Rica, it's also about the small, um, you know, the colourful frogs and the, the, you know, the unusual sort of iridescent um, mm -hmm. uh, lizards and, um, you know, and, and birds everywhere, of course. Um, it's, it's an incredible bird watching destination. Um, the tree on the bottom left, strangely, is one of these trees that, that you know, that I think they call it a walking tree because it can actually you know, move up to something like half a metre every year um, if, if needed to as it fights for, for sunshine. So um, I've also put in a slide here just to, to remind myself uh, to talk about the night walks. Um, so pretty much at every single lodge, um, they will offer um, night hikes with torches into the forest, um, you know, along the trails. Um, and they're really exciting. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're fantastic opportunities to spot wildlife. Um, that um you know that isn't really sort of moving around very much so you know whilst during the day you might see you know monkeys and you know they come and go and um you know it might be difficult to spot at certain times on the night walks i find you, you always just see a great a great variety some of it quite scary looking again um that's actually just a tree boa um so um it's a constrictor not uh, not dangerous at all um and down what's on the, that bottom, at the bottom, what's that on the left hand side, Ben? That, yeah, the, the one down on, on the left hand side is, uh, is another frog, another okay. poison, uh, poison arrow frog. Um, that, uh, I mean, you just see them everywhere, and they're all these, you know, beautiful, beautiful colors. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think this is one part of Costa Rica I love actually is, um, you know, it's just the small things. Um, you know the unexpected you know that you're going to see sloths you know you're going to see monkeys but you don't quite know what sort of um, types of frogs or strange creepy crawlies you, you might see um, sleeping birds up in the top right that um, really surprised me um, I don't think I'd ever seen sleeping birds before not remotely bothered by um, by us and our guides um, 
So, so yes, of course, Ossa Peninsula is primarily a wildlife destination. Um, I mentioned that, um, that there are also beaches um, and, and showed some pictures of there. But again, there, there are um, other attractions here as well that, that can warrant the longer stay. Um, it's an area that families will tend to, to stay maybe up to five nights because a lot of the activities are, are quite family friendly, um, you know, zip lines and learning to surf, um, uh, kayaking or stand up paddle boarding, um, all, all in a very safe environment. Um, so you know of course it's the pacific there are certain beaches that you wouldn't swim in um but um, there are plenty of beaches that you can swim in and the, the hotels um uh, are, you know very knowledgeable about that so um so yeah whilst well, not a traditional beach destination because the beaches aren't you know don't have lots of beach facilities um most of the hotels will offer shuttles towel services um to take with your picnics um you know so that you can have an enjoyable day um there's a picture of a whale here so as well as dolphins so this is a great area for whale watching um in the season so that tends to be from um whale watching i think it's from june to to about october i'll, I'll need to double check those dates um but um uh, this is one of the areas that the humpback whales coming from the south will come up by, but also the humpback whales coming from the north, um, the northern hemisphere humpbacks will also um, come down from the south. So there's actually two migrations um, in this area. Um, and of course, um, some, some you know, snorkeling opportunities as well um, on the islands offshore. Um, there's a great island called Canyo Island that's um, a great place for snorkeling with turtles and um, you know, lots of fish. and and so on so these are the, the the pristine wild beaches that i was mentioning um absolutely stunning I, I i love just wandering up the beach and you know you do see um you know lots of macaws flying out and toucans and so on um so i personally didn't do much sunbathing it was more just something i enjoyed you know being able to just you know hike along the beach for as long as you want to go really um uh, so yeah lo lovely area um, on the top right, um, there's that picture is taken from one of the hotels and you can see the waves coming in. So those are really good for learning to surf, um, uh, which um, unfortunately I didn't get a chance to, but um, it's supposed to be a, a really great place for that. Um, accommodation again is is high standard. So um, uh, Laparios is, is an example of the top end um, for those that, that really are seeking the, the luxury and um, you know, private plunge pools and um, uh, large rooms and so on. So, you know, it's a lovely, great property. Um, but there's quite a big choice here as well, all spread out from each other. So La Paloma is, you know, is a, a little notch down um, in terms of extravagance, but still beautiful setting over, uh, overlooking the sea, set in the jungle, which is just so typically Costa Rican, just surrounded by uh, lush green and bromeliads and orchids and um uh, you know making the most of uh, of the forest setting uh, and then casa corcovado which is where i stayed which um is long established it's one of the original um hotel lodges there um and again um lots of comforts um and then you just walk out into the trails and you're in primary you know primary forest um so um and, and important to mention in all of these places you, you tend to see a lot just around the hotel around the gardens lots of tropical birds and um and so on so uh i'm going to move on to arenal now so arenal um is one of the um you know the most famous um volcanoes in central america i'd say because of the perfect cone shape um traditionally it was a place that people went to for the volcano itself because it was active and smoking it still is active but it's um it's currently um, dormant, um, but a wealth of other activities have um, have kept people coming to this area. So, soft adventure is probably the the main one. Um, soft adventure combined with wildlife. So, the hanging bridges in Arenal um, are amazing for getting up high into the canopy and seeing the the forest from a different um, uh, different perspective. Um, so, you can see on the the photo, sort of top left. Um, uh, the hanging bridges sort of traverse canyons and um, you really can expect to see um, sloths or birds um, 
you know, wildlife whilst you're on the, the hanging bridges. Um, those who want to be more active, um, then uh, Arenal is great for sort of water related sports with lots of rivers, so rappelling or, you know, jumping into pools. Um, for those that just want to relax, um, because it's volcanic, of course, there are amazing hot springs everywhere. Um, the one in the bottom right is called Ecotermales and um, is, yeah, is just absolutely wonderful. Um, generally, we try and take clients there um, before the sun sets so that you can enjoy the, um, you know, enjoy the, the, the pools as the sun sets. And, um, and then they have a, a restaurant with really good hearty local food. So, um, you know, tend to combine it with um, a sort of late afternoon, early evening activity followed by dinner before you know, going back to the hotel. Um, and rafting again, um, there are lots of places in Costa Rica that you can raft. I'll, I'll come on to that a little bit later. Um, I, I've actually never rafted in Latin America. I've only ever done it once in Nepal and I was a bit nervous about it, but um, the, the fact I haven't done it in Latin America is more just I haven't had the opportunity. Um, but the, the rafting in Costa Rica looks absolutely amazing. And I'm not a big adrenaline junkie, so I wouldn't want to go on you know the sort of class four rapids um but there are plenty of um um you know quite accessible rafting options even for for children as uh, as young as um seven and eight um where really it's more of a float down the river um so more of the the you know typical um soft adventure um excursions that costa rica is famous for the zip lines and the tram lines um so arenal is a great place to do it um and the, as I said previously, a real range of accommodation. So Nyara Springs is, um, you know, has been voted one of the best hotels in the world. Um, it is extremely expensive um, and um, and is adults only, but they have a sister property that that is more reasonable and, um, you know, is open to families. Um, or Los de Guana is an idea of a more mid-range, um, you know, upper mid-range, uh, you know, hot option. Um, Again, I'm really just showing these hotels um, just to try and give a flavour for the the kind of range that um, that you can stay at. Um, Casa Luna is you know is larger, um, you know more simple, less less you know sort of fancy decor and so on, but still a really nice option and all with views of um, of Arenal volcano in the in the background. Um, so all all with excellent locations. So the next destination. And I apologize, I know I'm talking quite quickly. I'm just trying to fit this into to the, the time I have. But the next destination I was going to talk about was Monteverde. So Monteverde is a cloud forest reserve. Um, um, there are lots of cloud forest reserves throughout Costa Rica. So I'm going to talk about Monteverde, but just bear in mind that, you know, that there are a number of different ones. Monteverde is probably the most well known because it combines so well with Arenal and with you know, some of the coastal areas. Um, so why would um, you know what what does one do in the the cloud forest of course being costa rica it's about flora and fauna um, but in monteverde there's actually quite a lot more as well um you know it's a big coffee growing area cacao growing area so um you know there there are you know quite a lot of um more cultural related excursions in that sense that you can go and meet the growers and learn about the processing of coffee and um you know, even make your own chocolate, which uh, is particularly popular with, with the kids and with me. Um, so, um, and Monteverde as well is, is um, quite a well-established small town next to the reserve. And so they've got lots of attractions um, that, um, that warrant a, a stay of two to three nights. So beyond the actual reserve itself that most people would perhaps go to for, for you know, morning and afternoon. Um, in the town, there's a butterfly farm. Um, uh, they call it a ranarium. I, I translated it as a frog house. It's like a frog zoo, I guess. Uh, serpentarium that, that's amazing because um, you can see all these different species of colorful snake um, from all over the country um, uh, up close and, and safely. Um, but the main thing that those visiting Monteverde would probably want to see as a quetzal, um, which is one of the, the unique birds to Central America, um, and absolutely amazing. Um, Monteverde is one of the best places in Central America to see it. Um, 
Um, you know, I, I would go as far as saying you're pretty unlucky if you don't see a Quetzal when you visit uh, visit Monteverde. And um, that's the the green one, um, iridescent green with the long plumes that was much um, valued by you know the ancient uh, peoples of the Americas. Um, so good chance of seeing that but of course along the way lots of other wildlife as well uh, capuchin monkeys sloths um uh, and then of course the the nighttime walks as well where you know you might come across um you know um you know interesting frogs and um boas and the tree and and, uh, and so on so yeah re really incredible and again the guides um it's not just about the animals a lot of it's also about the, the the plants and the trees that the guides are so good at infusing about and um you know and, and um you, you come away feeling you've just learned a huge amount so these are some of the other activities i previously mentioned um so the coffee farm and the cacao with um of course being costa rica there's a zip line pretty much everywhere um <laughs> and uh monteverde lodge and gardens is the the you know the best place to stay this gives you an, an example when i say the best place i mean the um the most luxurious um so you know nice spacious rooms and really good location near the reserve um and excellent food um hotel belmar is is sort of upper mid-range i would say so you can see that it's still a really comfortable room with some facilities um always nice gardens um you know with plenty to to see in the gardens if you're relaxing at lunchtime um and then uh trap family lodge was uh, just to give you an idea of um you know the the more sort of um i wouldn't say budget end but the um the lead-in uh, from a sort of price point of view three star equivalent really friendly um you can see um you know really serious about their sustainable um you know sustainable practices so solar power um and um in fact these guys do do a lot of farm to table um cuisine um so yeah so yeah these are the places the places i've spoken about primarily are, are wildlife based so i think in the video you could see that most people will go to costa rica for wildlife but probably spend a bit of time on the beach as well so um if that's something that you're interested in you, you you of course places like Ossa have beaches um and some of the other um places on the pacific where you can combine wildlife with beach but if you're looking for a traditional sort of beach holiday and that sort of caribbean vibe then um puerto viejo and Cahuita are, are really the places to go so um further north of here along the caribbean is is not really traditional beach destination it starts going into sort of mangroves and similar to tortuguero but this area is um is what you'd expect of the caribbean i think um you know white uh, you know whiter sand beaches coral reefs so some great snorkeling um diving here as well um that photo in the middle so Kawita is a national park as well as as well as a marine park so um this this is one of the one of the few places in Costa Rica where you can just go snorkeling off the beach. Um, usually on the Pacific side, most of the snorkeling will be arranged via boat tour that will take you to the place of interest and then you'll snorkel there. But um, for anyone that's keen on snorkeling, then um, then the Caribbean side is is a must, I would say. Um, and the whole flavor on the Caribbean is always a bit different. Um, um, you know, if you if there's such a thing as more relaxed than costa rica then then you know you would find that in uh, in the caribbean i mean costa rica is incredibly relaxed um you know throughout the country but uh, but even more so on the caribbean so um again some pictures just to try and give you a flavor for for what awaits you um it's not your flat dead sort of calm caribbean that you might find in some of the the traditional sort of islands um uh, outside of you know the latin american caribbean so you can surf here learn to surf it's, it's a great place for um you know for, for taking family if um if you know kids are wanting to be active and learn something new um and of course um although most people would go here for a bit of beach time um there is also a lot of wildlife including a, a sloth sanctuary which is the photo in the top right of the sloth with the little blanket so um i think they did a television program the the um on is it planet earth um but yeah you can visit the sloth sanctuary and see the cute little babies and um they've got a another one close to san jose where you can even have breakfast at the sloth sanctuary 
um, and the idea is that you have breakfast there whilst also the, the sloths are having their breakfast. So it's really great. Um, so this is Kawita and in terms of accommodation, um, again, a, a range. So um, this is um, you know, the, the top end um, luxury hotel there, an old sort of Victorian style, um, you know, wooden, wooden plantation house um, that's been converted, um, you know, exquisitely. And, um, uh, and then um, quite modern the chameleons, not, not quite as expensive, modern minimalist, but um, you can see the, the picture um, in the middle uh, at the top, um, again, right, you know, right next to the beach. Um, although <clears throat> this one does actually have a road running between the beach and the hotel. Um, no big deal because no one really travels along the road. Um, and then again, if if looking to keep the cost down um, and um, and you know spend the money on uh, on the excursions or um, or other things, then Carry Blue is uh, is a really good sort of simple, comfortable, well-run um, place. So I'm almost uh, at the end of the destinations. So I was going to talk about the Pacific here. I've just highlighted three areas. So Uvita. Manuel Antonio and Nicoya Peninsula. There are lots of places that that um, you can and that we do send clients to along the coast. But um, I've just broken it down to to these ones, um, primarily because the Nicoya Peninsula on the whole is drier and more arid. So if you're thinking of going um, during the um, you know school holidays, June, July, August time, then um, and and you know, sort of sunbathing is an important part of, of uh, the holiday, then generally speaking, this part here is best at, at that time just because it's drier. Ironically, so is the Caribbean, whereas the Southern Pacific um, will be wetter on the whole during, you know, during those months. Not a problem if you're going there for the wildlife, but if you're also wanting a bit of a beach holiday, then um, Nicoya um, is a great place for that. Um, so, uh, Manuel Antonio is um, is is uh, well. Manuel Antonio itself is a national park, um, but it's also an area with lots of um, you know beaches and lots of soft soft adventure activity. So it's very popular with with families um, and for people um, who want a bit of a bit of nightlife of options for restaurants and so on in the evening. Um, if people are wanting something quieter. Um, then uh, close by Uvita is um, you know is amazing um, and funny enough it's got the picture of the whale at the bottom and then the beach is also the same shape as a, as a whale tail which is pure coincidence but Uvita is part of the Marino Bayena which means Bayena means um, whale so it's, it's a whale um, uh, marine park and is one of the best places to see whales um, from here we go mid July to mid October I think I said June to October earlier so I wasn't far off um, and as I said there are two migrations so um, you'll see the ones coming from um, the north um, between December to, to February and uh, from the south between July to October um, and again there being forest, there are plenty of other excursions to do in this area, particularly um, lots of them uh, are water related, looking for waterfalls and, uh, and so on. Finally, Nicoya Peninsula, where I mentioned it's a bit drier. Uh, um, so uh, lovely beaches. Um, I spent, uh, spent probably about three nights here um, and um, didn't do a great deal and um, you know, really enjoyed it. I wasn't there, unfortunately, at the time that the turtles come, but um, a couple of times a month during the months of July to December, um, they have what they call mass arrivals and they really are mass arrivals. The entire beaches, are, are, you know, specific beaches are covered in um, uh, turtles nesting. So of course it's very well controlled and well protected. Um, you know, visitors won't be going to beaches to, to go swimming or to, to sunbathe, but you can organize turtle watching tours um, and it's spectacular by all accounts. So river rafting, I'm, I'm aware of the time, Charlie. Um, do right. cut me off if I need to run through, but um, river rafting was something I mentioned is, uh, is amazing in Costa Rica and there are several different places that you can do it um, and uh, uh, several different levels. Um, so it can be quite sedate and you know, really just a gentle float, as you can see in the picture of the three boats going between the canyon. 
um, or it can be you know class four um, rapids where you know where you're going to get very wet and tossed around and you know very possibly tossed out of the boat um, which is part of the fun I'm told personally that's not for me but uh, those that like rafting um, uh, you know I think that's part of, part of what they're looking for um, and being Costa Rica extremely well run so um, actually the the local partners that, that we use were set up um, originally by uh, Costa Rican and American partner uh, partnership and um, and they pioneered um, rafting in Costa Rica and brought with them all the American safety standards so um, it's extremely safe and extremely well run um, I, I put this uh, a mention of Pakwari Lodge in here because it's absolutely unique I think if there's one property that is really worth highlighting in Costa Rica for those who you know like the idea of rafting and um something really unique then Pakwari is is amazing um equally good for couples or for families um um you know it's not sort of catering particularly to one or the other but the reason it's great is the the way you get there again is adventurous you raft in um gentle rafting to get there spend a couple of nights there and then raft out by the time um you know you've already learned a, a few of the sort of skills of rafting to get in uh the, the way out is a is a you know a little more exciting but um again uh, children can do it as well if um i forget the age range i think it's 12 but it gives you an idea that uh that it's not um you know it's it's, it's not too kind of um uh hair raising um and when whilst at the lodge extremely luxurious um um amazing service and, and great excursions to do around there this is the only area where there's a bit of indigenous influence in uh, in, in costa rica as well so where there is something of the ancient um you know sort of tribal traditions um so um when to go um i i would probably say go go backwards and say when not to go um i would probably try and avoid going in October and November because those are the rainiest months particularly October um, and I mean you could go there in those months but, but you know it pro probably best not because there will be a lot of rain irrespective of where you go um, outside of those months um, there's always somewhere that uh, in the country that um, you know that, that you know very much warrants visiting so um, you can see the dry season traditionally is December to May um, of course it's rainforest and it's tropical so you will still get rain during the dry season but it tends to be a heavy afternoon downpour and then that's it um, at the most the green season um, is uh, is June to September so that's when you'd expect a bit more rain um, than uh, than during the dry season but again it's rare that it rains all day long it tends to heat up and then um, have a big downpour um, we get a lot of families wanting to go uh, away to Costa Rica during the family holidays and um, you know, they have an amazing time. Um, we just make sure that we send them to the parts of the country that um, you know, are best at that time of the year. So that would be the Guanacaste coast up in the northwest, um, then the Caribbean side. And Arenal and Monteverde, really a good year round as well. They, they have a drier climate. Um, and then of course the last consideration is whether you're particularly keen to to, to see whales or turtles um, because um, uh, that's very often on people's bucket lists and um, and if it is just something to bear in mind that, that you want to, to keep your timing so very lastly just to give you a bit of background on journey latin america in fact charlie has covered most of this um you know so we're, we're celebrating 40 years um it's a bit of an unfortunate year for, for travel to be celebrating 40 years but uh, we are nevertheless um we offer tailor-made and escorted group tours um most of what we do is tailor-made i would say but um for, for costa rica but we do have an escorted tour as well um we i, I I quite like the quote here from um, Condé Nast because I think this really just sums this up. So no, no other company has more first-hand knowledge uh, of its subject than Journey Latin America, and I think that that really is um, is a, well, it's a lovely quote, and I think it's accurate and and true, primarily because we all work there because of a passion for Latin America and Latin America only. 
Um, so you can see we've won some awards, and um, you know there are lots of other reasons why why Journey Latin America. Um, you know we've worked very closely with uh, with Putney Travel, so um, you know lots of other good reasons to to contact Charlie and uh, and you know have us arrange uh, your holiday to Costa Rica for you. Very lastly, I am going to show one last video, if I can, um, which is a which is a travel app. Makes travel easy. It's simple to use, saves time, and provides you with all your important travel information. Journey Latin America is travel in one place. Makes travel easy. It's simple to use, saves time, and provides you with all your important Great. So um, that that seemed to be playing twice at the same time. So I don't know if you if 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 it uh, worked for you. But um, it, so yeah, that that was Costa Rica. I've run through it really quickly. I'm sure what that is, Ben. Um, thank you so much for that. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, the you know, there's there's so much to see there. I mean, I think particularly brought to life for me was you, you talked about being in the jungle with the guides um, and you go in expecting to see certain things and then you're actually it's the it's perhaps the smaller things the reptiles the plants the the birds that the trees that the guides bring to life which makes it makes it all so special but thank you so much that was that was wonderful now does anyone have any 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 immediate questions they want to ask Ben or myself on on, on Costa Rica or or um, anything they've seen on the on, on the show Either spit them on the chat or, or, or unmute yourselves and, and, and ask away. Ben, I've got a couple of things while, everyone, while anyone's, um, while, while anyone's, you know, you, you mentioned about um, self-drive. How, how easy is that to do in and around, in and around Costa Rica? Well, it's, it, it's pretty easy. We've recced it um, ourselves and come up with, uh, with itineraries, um, you know, that cover pretty much all of the country. Um, and yeah, it's, it's incredibly easy. The, um, you know, the, the itineraries that we put together come with directions um, and um, the roads in, in Costa Rica are, are now really good. We, we probably didn't do self-drive about maybe five, well, we've been doing it for about five, six years, I would say. Before that, some of the roads um, you know, weren't particularly well signposted, and um, and you know, were, were quite potholed. But um, there's been a big spend on infrastructure, um, you know, prior to, to um, you know to us starting on the the car hire, and and so now really it's uh, yeah, it's very easy. I think the joy of it is that um, you know the, the the travel between the two spots um you know the, the two places that that you're staying will always have something of interest on route um you know the so it's very easy just to stop off and you know hop into a you know into a, um spider -man monkey sanctuary or um okay. you yep. know butterfly farm or chocolate farm etc great and and um uh, julia's julia's asked you know what are the temperatures like there i think i know the answer to this one yeah, so um, I mean, it's going to be hot year round um, uh, on the whole. Um, the the um, 
when I say hot, I'm, I have to say I'm not brilliant on temperatures, but um, I would imagine that you'd be looking at high 20s, early 30s um, at the hottest time of the year. Um, the, the, the northern part, actually the driest part is, um, you know, is, is probably, um, so up on the Guanacaste is probably the hottest part of, of the country. Um, but, uh, but yes, I mean, there's nowhere particularly cool other than when you're in the Monteverde cloud forest areas, or, or I say Monteverde, of course, any of the cloud forests, where you're up, um, you know, at, uh, a couple of thousand feet and, um, you know, and... Uh, Sorry, I can hear... No, no, I'm asking? not sure where that's come from. And how, I'm just going to look, I think, I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, and yeah, so when you say cold, when you say cool, what are we talking about? Just uh, putting on a jacket in the evening or... or... Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, a jacket in the evening. Sorry, a jacket in the evening.